Welcome to The Recovering Perfectionist, where you'll learn all the hacks you need to get started and finished on your business or project. You'll connect with successful entrepreneurs who are in perfectionist rehab, unapologetically experimenting and balancing life, business, family, and me time. I'm your host and Chief Recovering Perfectionist, Claire Barton. Hey everyone, welcome to The Recovering Perfectionist. On the show today, I talk to Quartz Lippert, who is many, many things, as you'll hear about in the episode. Um, but one of my, um, one of the things that I know her most closely for, and anyone who's listening might know her as well, is she is 50% of Smart Chicks with uh, Kirsty Bonner, which is a beautiful company that Quartz and Kirsty run together out of um, Adelaide. It had a beautiful start at the beginning of their. Um, getting to know each other and their friendship and which turned into a beautiful business partnership, uh, which is something else that I'd love to talk to both of them about at some stage, because I know that doing a partnership is a completely different kettle of fish, um, but a really exciting one as well. If you've got such a good um, couple of people who are working together. So Quartz and I talk about all things authenticity, not just Instagram authenticity and what it actually means to show up in your business and online and to be your actual self these days. So it's a really cool episode. I hope you enjoy it. I have got the amazing Quartz Lippert here, who is the co-creator of Smart Chicks, which is a beautiful business that facilitates authentic connections for entrepreneurs um, and lots of other things. So, hey, how are you going, Quartz? Hello, I'm good. I was just saying I feel a bit nervous. So, um... Yeah, if I go bright red, that'll be funny. I'll be gentle. I'll be gentle. Don't worry. And I do it too. I have the rush of despair. I have the rush, the rush of despair. despair. Whatever happens, so it's totally okay. We can we can unite in our red rushy neck. Yeah, exactly. That's what it's about. So, um, for everyone listening out there, um, Quartz and I have known each other for probably, I don't know, a year and a half, almost two years maybe in some sort of way, shape or form. And we kind of kept bumping into each other in the online world in lots of different ways and places and we kind of became aware of each other, I sort of feel. And then there was a few things that happened, a lot of similarities. We're both from Adelaide. Um, uh, no, you're not from Adelaide originally, but you're in Adelaide now. Yeah, I am. I you am are, from Adelaide. Oh, you are from there originally. Yeah. I'm from there originally. Well, we're kind of both in the same sort of area. In fact, you live really close to where I used to work when I was in Adelaide. <laughs> and um, we've started doing some collaboration together with Smart Chicks. So we'll talk about that a little bit later as well. And I have just been such a massive fan of yours, um, mainly, well, for lots of different reasons. But one thing that I absolutely have loved and one thing that you've done that's given me so much confidence is to um, get out there and actually be okay with showing up authentically online and that sort of thing. So that's what we're kind of going to talk about today. But before we do that, you might be able to articulate a bit better than I have what you do and who you are and what your thing is. So I'm going to hand over to you to introduce <laughs> yourself properly. <laughs> okay, so I actually do quite a lot of things. Yes. Um, the, the, the majority of my time at the moment is being a mother <laughs> to my two children, but um, also, as you said, the co-creator of Smart Chicks. So my business partner, Kirsty Bonner, and I created that because we were just so sick to death of going to networking events and finding uh, Facebook groups particularly really, really not authentic. Like mm. we just found it was just like a shark feeding ground for business cards kind of being flipped around <laughs> and no one actually really wanted to know anything about you. They just kind of yeah. wanted to sell shit to you. So we, we created that. So that's been going since, um, well... It's been going since about December 2015 mm -hmm. in the sense that we started creating our own events for Smart Chicks here in Adelaide, but really it's only since August um, 2016 that we've started to actually think about how we can go global with that mm. business, um, which is obviously how I met you, Claire, yeah. um, because we've collaborated in that capacity. And um, so I'm, I'm doing that a lot at the moment and we're also, um, I'm, I'm also actually a paediatric occupational therapist. So for those of you playing at home that don't see me showing up um, online in that space, um, so I'm actually quite savvy when it comes to understanding how to help children particularly mm. with 
um, sensory processing difficulties. And um, I do a lot of pre primitive reflex integration and sensory integration work with those kids. Um, so again, it's kind of like um, all facets. <laughs> I always feel That's like I've got great. so many things. And I've also got a property investment um, and renovation company that I started yeah. a little while ago. Um, <laughs> out of despair when I was like, oh, Jesus, how can I not go back to work? So that's, you know, that came about a little while ago. And I also have a company in America where I actually buy, um, I've, I've got property and land over in America, which will be expanding this year, hopefully. So there's a few things going on. I do and sleep as well, Luke quite well. well. <laughs> yes. Oh, and also I, um, I, I, there's a company in Melbourne called Melaleuca and I actually um, market for them. So I've got a small customer base with them yeah. and that kind of just started because I, I needed some flexibility. So I just started marketing for them. And um, it's absolutely yeah. awesome. And, and I remember yeah. one of the very early conversations we had, I was like, um, I was absolutely blown away by all these different kind of income streams, but I haven't, hadn't really ever thought of it as different income streams. And I said, that's exactly what I want to do. Like when I remember having this conversation with my husband about, I don't know, six or seven years ago, well before kids of saying, I just don't want to do the same thing anymore. I don't want to go to the office five days a week and do the same job and do la 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 and see all the same people. And I, I said, I want to be like, a, and at this stage I was doing massage therapy as well. I want to be a massage therapist on Monday. I want to be a yoga teacher on Tuesday. I want to be a circus performer on Wednesday. And I want to be an astronaut <laughs> And all that sort of thing, something along those lines. But what I really meant was I want different income streams. I want to, you know, have lots yeah. of different things going on and not just have to worry about one industry, one job, one occupation. So that was really cool when I met you that to see how diverse it actually could be. You didn't have to do all different jobs within the same industry. You didn't have to do all, all different alternative therapies or something. You could actually have your fingers in so many different pies and that didn't take away from any of them. It actually strengthened every single one of them. So yeah, I was a yeah. massive, massive fan of that and it really sort of reframed for me what was possible and how it wasn't just different jobs, it was different income streams and different, um, I guess for, for me and probably for you as well, it kind of ticks different boxes for different things. Like when I was um, a massage therapist and I was an HR manager, I, I was ticking that one-on-one -on -one beautiful nurturing physical side of me with the massage therapy and then in the um, corporate it was, it was really um, nurturing all of that you know, high intelligent, really great conversations, staying up to date with what was happening in the world and the media and, you know, um, corporate world and all that sort of thing. So it was kind of this beautiful balance. But at the time, I thought I was, I should be really embarrassed. Like I didn't want my massage people to know that I was also a high level management person. And I didn't want my management yeah. people to know that I was, you know, some woo woo massage therapist. I thought that was completely like no one would take me seriously. But actually, the things that I got and the things that I gave from both of those things were beautiful. Like it was a really beautiful balance. So yeah. And totally. I think everything kind of complements each other as well. Like yeah. you get great skills that can be passed through to each different yeah. thing. What I will say though is um, I'm not a huge fan necessarily of trying to do everything at once. Like the whole, mm. you know, chasing five rabbits. <laughs> kind <Yes>. of five. <laughs> <laughs> But what, so, you know, commencing five things at once. No. But I, I am a huge fan of showing up in an area and really trying to develop an income stream in that area. And when that's ticking, yeah, great. That's going to keep going over there and then moving on to the next thing, building that up, moving on to the next thing and the next yeah. thing. And things can be simultaneous. But mm. I've learned that um, I can't possibly be the best person I can be in all areas if I'm trying to focus on so many things at once. I've made yeah. that mistake. Um, but, yeah, so mm. there's, a, there's seemingly a lot going on, but really smart chicks and um, our whole authentic connections and getting out of the bushes of your business is the yeah. main vibe. <laughs> Exactly. I'm focusing on at the moment. Exactly. So, obviously, so look, I think that's probably um, some people who are listening who have heard of you and Kirsty and Smart Chicks um, and who perhaps follow you or in your group or that sort of thing will probably, like I, I feel like people who don't even know that I'm connected to you or that I know you will often talk about you as the person like, oh, like I'm trying to show up on Facebook authentically and I'm trying to do this just like Quartz does. You know that you know that girl from Smart Chicks? Like people are always kind of citing you even if you don't know it. So I think that's really cool. Um, that's really freaking cool. It's really cool. <laughs> and there's a, lot of, there's a lot of talk about 
authentic and authentic is a bit of a funny word for people at the moment because I think a lot of people have used the word authentic inauthentically like they have said the word I'm going to be authentic but actually what that means is they've always got full hair and makeup on they might show up um yeah quite often they might get a bit ranty but it's not it's not true authenticness and it's you know what I call Instagram authentic or Pinterest authentic like filtered you, authentic you know what I mean authentic hashtag no filter <laughs> that's right exactly <laughs> exactly hashtag be real whatever <laughs> But what I've noticed is like when I first started seeing you pop up on things, you were often in the playground drinking coffee in your car about to go and yeah. pick up kids from a playground or whatever. Like it was, it was such a, um, it wasn't just what you were saying, it was where you were and what you were doing and, and that whole, like you were cracking up laughing. You were talking to yourself on, um, on the Facebook Live or something like that and cracking up laughing because you were just so like, this is, this is how it is. Like I want to do a Facebook, yeah. I want to show up and I want to have a chat with you guys. I haven't got time to sit down and spend 15 minutes writing this post. And I have, I've got three seconds before I have to go and face the crazies that I know my children are going to be and somehow get them home, fed, bath, bed and all that sort of thing. Like it was just this beautiful marriage of actually like authentically showing us who you were and what you were doing and a little bit into your life, which is where the connection is, I think. I think that's exactly right. The biggest rule that I have given myself, well, it's not even a rule, it's just kind of happened and now I make sure that I stick to it, is, um, oh, hold on, before I say that bit, I'm going to go back. So my friend Sarah and I were chatting about my, my brand, um, my personal brand, right? And I'd already kind of created it, but we were trying to, we were trying to look at what two words described me. And then what you do is you basically use um, those two words to make sure that no matter where you show up in your business or in your life, uh, does it reflect those two words? Mm. I, I hope that makes sense. Anyway, yeah, so the, the two words that, yeah, yeah. that we chose that described me were daggly authentic, right? <laughs> That's what I came up with. And she was like, fuck oh, yeah, That's That'll freaking do. awesome. <laughs> so, um, and I love that because every time I'm showing up anywhere, if I, I don't tend to second my guess myself anymore, but it, actually, no, I do. Like this morning, even when we, when we sat down, I said to myself, oh crap, I totally like didn't wash my hair. I think there's like, I took the toilet paper rolls that were just sitting on that desk back there and put them on the ground. Cause I thought that's probably like, maybe don't have that in the interview. <laughs> but, and I've texted my husband and said, can you get me a coffee? But can you not bring don't it in? <laughs> <laughs> and please be quiet when you walk in the door. But, um, you know, I found myself kind of even second, like, oh, you know, I haven't really done a podcast interview before. What are you supposed to do for a podcast interview? And then you kind of get yourself into this, um, I don't know, like a treadmill, like, oh, you know, maybe I should have done this. Maybe I should have done that. Yeah. But what I even had to tell myself like 20 minutes ago was, no, my thing is daggly authentic and that's okay. That has That is what has inspired the people. That is what yeah. um, resonates with the people that want to follow Smart Chicks or me or whoever. So um, it's funny. So every time I show up in the car or in the park or in my bedroom, I think I took everyone on a tour around my house once. I've got a hashtag mum thug life that I like to use um, for my business life. And I've also got like a crazy lady idea for that down the track. But for my business life where I actually show people this is what it is. Like we are not on freaking laptops on deck chairs around the pool in Hawaii people. Right. Yeah. Like, and we're not male. I'm not a, this male single hustler that has a four hour work week. Yeah. My work week is I look after my children and I fit this shit in, in yeah. between the cracks of looking after the kids. So you will see the, you know, yoga on the carpet. You will see the crap all over my kitchen. You will see the toilet paper on the, yeah, <laughs> the toilet paper on the floor. Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> you will see all of the raw and um, amazingly daggly, authentic detail mm. because it's really important that as women, particularly in business, we we know what is the truth and we know what is true for us personally. Now I don't bag anyone for putting makeup on. I put makeup on, I put heels on, I put dresses on, 
but that's not something that I can sustain on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And I never have done. Even when I was working full time and not for profits for 10 years, I was, I've been wearing Birkenstocks, Birkenstock Gazer, Giza, however you pronounce it, <laughs> since I was 18, yeah. literally, <laughs> before they were cool. <laughs> I don't, maybe they're not cool. I don't know if they've ever been cool. For mums. For mums, it's really cool. I don't know if they're cool or not. They're comfortable. Yeah. Not so, I was like, I can walk around Europe in them. And that's yeah. kind of cool. Um, but I've like not, it's almost like a Steve Jobs who gets dressed in the same clothes every single day. I put on my shorts that are still my maternity pants from 2011. <laughs> I bought in Hawaii on special that I'm wearing right now. Yep. I put on my shorts, I put on my t-shirt and I put on my friggin' Birkenstocks and the day starts. Yeah. So I think, anyway, back to what we were talking about, it is really important to kind of just show up and don't second guess yourself. Like if you're in the car waiting for your, like I'll be in the car on a Friday waiting for my son to finish preschool and I, I deliberately try and get there 10 minutes before, my poor child is always the last one to get picked up because I'm like quickly doing my videos on Facebook, like between <laughs> 4 and 4.15 as much as I can. <laughs> Uh, there'll be, you know, I've usually got my sunglasses on. I've usually got, um, you know, my seatbelt still on because I haven't quite got as far as taking it off. The yeah. car's switched off. There's car noise all around me. It doesn't matter, guys. Like, it yeah. doesn't matter what yeah. you, what you um, where you are and what you look like. What matters is the fact that you are speaking from the heart. You're on your mission mm -hmm. and you're speaking your truth because you don't want to be a bullshit version of yourself, yeah. right? Because when you're a bullshit version of yourself, you attract the people that are attracted to the bullshit version of you instead of you. Which and then is really hard. It's really hard exactly. to keep up. <laughs> it's hard to keep up with the lies and the web. Yeah. So just be yourself, be genuine. And um, being genuine doesn't mean that you're being an asshole to people. Right. Like you're not going to sit there and, um, you know, be rude to people. But being genuine and saying what is on your mind is really important yeah. because that's where the heartfelt message will come from. I think there's this um, awesome thing. I, I think you've probably experienced as, as well, especially since you started using things like Dagley Authentic. So I certainly have noticed this thing that, that's happened since I started using Recovering Perfectionist. It's the worst. Yes. It was like the last... Uh, piece of the puzzle to give me permission slash force me to actually be a recovering perfectionist. Like yes. now that I started using that, if I do anything perfectly, people are going to be like, hang on a minute. She said she was a recovering perfectionist. So I've almost got this beautiful excuse not to be a perfectionist. And it's this yes. like, kind of like, I'm going to be daggly authentic. So if I'm always in heels, makeup, beautiful background, no noise, that sort of thing, it's it it doesn't create any trust because it's like well she's saying she's daggly authentic but she's always pretty friggin on top of shit and everything's always kind of perfect over there it there's no yeah. trust there. whereas if you come if you like i i would say to people or something that i work with people is to be really realistic about how many hours they have and it's not just oh i work about 30 hours a week well okay what does that look like you've got 30 hours without kids Oh no, by the time I do drop off and pick up, I've probably got about 26 hours. Okay, and do you have to do any other things like pay bills, do the groceries, tidy the house, all that sort of thing? Oh yeah, that probably takes about six hours. Okay, we're down to 20 now. Um, you know, all that sort of thing. And it's actually going, you know, it's, it's all well and good to have all these beautiful plans and to listen to people and see other people who are saying, I only work four hours a day and I only do this. And I'm sure some of them it's true, but I'm sure some of them it's not fucking true. Or they, you know, there's a lot of other things kind of going on. But like you said, when we've got kids, like my kid was up at two o'clock in the morning vomiting and I thought last night, God, I'm going to have a kid at home with me all day today. I've got all these recordings and stuff to do. What, how's it going to be? But sometimes that's how it is. And I, I choose to work and I choose to be authentic and show up and say I'm a mum these people are the most important to me I'm sorry guys like my clients you guys are really really great and really important but these are my kids they kind of come first like that's going to happen yeah so they're kind I, of the important ones you know mm -hmm. and so I can't I can't be like oh well he's just going to have to you know go to I mean he's he's fine today so he has actually gone to to um kindy but this whole kind of thing like I can't say they're the most important person but then not make them the most important person all the time do you know what I mean yeah. it's, it's I totally know what you mean I was actually having a conversation with someone um recently I think it might have been inside my um Facebook group from memory but we were talking about um business lifestyle and um you know is your business 
a lifestyle business. And there was a lot of confusion around what that actually meant. Right. So there was a lot of comments kind of being floated around like, well, I didn't choose to, you know, be on call. And I didn't, I don't think being on call for birth, or I don't think that, um, you know, being um, working, like hustling at 11 p.m. every night, you would call a lifestyle business. Mm. And the way that I kind of look at the lifestyle business is being able to basically authentically show up in the way that you want to because you have the lifestyle that you have your lifestyle isn't a slave to your business your business Mm -hmm. is as a result of the lifestyle that you have so I have two children and a husband and I don't want to have a full-time job Mm. I haven't been able to have a full-time job for six years because of his workplace injury so my lifestyle is I need to be at home to support him and my children Therefore, my business needs to be flexible and a flexible business at home, you need to be authentic in that business. Yep. You can, I cannot sit here and be a corporate friggin', you know, gazillion dollar earning consultant to, a, to Westpac with this shit in the background. I don't want <laughs> to do that. I don't want to be on, I don't want to be on call um to a to a workplace seven days a week I don't want to do that so Mm -hmm. yeah I think it kind of yeah so your lifestyle is you've got your children you've got your husband and you want to be a business owner so this is the way that you need to authentically show up yeah and likewise you know what whatever works for you is what is going to work for you like you shouldn't have to do it you shouldn't have to fit into the box of what other people think you should be. You yeah. shouldn't have to fit into the box of what you perceive you yeah. need to be. And I think it's actually the, funny. I think one of the other like important parts of that when you're working with other people as your clients in your business is that you need to have people who get that. And if you're not showing up and saying, <coughs> This is me, this is how I work, if my kid's sick, I'm gonna have to cancel our appointment. Or if my kid's at home, he might be watching TV, but he might come and ask me for some squeezy yogurt as well. And if you're not okay with that, we can't work together. And you, may, you don't have to say it that explicitly if you're showing up online and if you're always talking about the fact that that's how you run your business. And I think we're doing actually, such a massive disservice to our clients and to ourselves and to other business mums if we're, if we're not being real about that because we're setting up this unrealistic expectation that like, we might as well go and work in corporate. Like I, one yeah. of my big things was uh, when I, I went back to work between having my kids, um, which is only eight, they're 18 months apart. So I went back to work for only about nine months or something. And um, I, he was always sick. Like he had um, 14 ear infections in 10 months. Like every second week he was having t- days off daycare. So I had to always take time off work or I was trying to work at home or whatever. And while I had a really supportive boss and a really great team who got it it was still a massive stress on me like I didn't yeah, want to be the bad. one making that phone call all the time and saying he's sick again like it's not, and it's not me so I'm healthy I'm totally able to work but I have to stay here and look after my kids so why would I try and set that up in my business where I go actually I need to get a babysitter or I need to do and sometimes I do like sometimes I have stuff and you know maybe it's just for my own mental health that I actually just need someone else to deal with that shit for, for once um but if I set up my business to be like, yep, I'll always be there. Everything's perfect. Everything's fine. My hair's always done. My, there's no kids screaming in the background. It's just not sustainable. And I might as well go back and get a job because I've set it up exactly the same situation. Exactly. You know, um, have you ever called my mobile and listened to the voice message? I love your voice message. It is the best <laughs> voice message. I sometimes call you and hope that you don't answer just so that I can <laughs> totally listen to it. <laughs> I wish that I had a recording to put on here. Um, Basically, I think it's really important. um, I find in terms of stress management and being able to show up authentically as myself in my business, I need to set boundaries around other people's expectations. And I'm not contactable, but there's no real reason for that. Um, There's the potential that they're going to get the shits or there's the potential that I'm going to lose that JV or there's the potential that um, someone, you know, some dude that I've never met before that I'm pitching for our business summer or whatever won't get why we're not riding back for three days. (laughs) 
So I've decided, <laughs> this is a real life example from yesterday. Um, so what I've decided to do is actually put a voice message on my phone that is along the line. I can't remember exactly what it says because I did it so long ago, but it's along the lines of, hey, leave me a message. If I don't get back to you, basically, I don't give a shit. I've got children. Yeah. Call me back in 24 hours. <laughs> yeah. Basically, it, it says something like, um, I'm sorry I've missed your call. I'm obviously busy doing something, probably taking care of my kids. And yeah, <laughs> if, if I don't call you back within 24 hours, can you just call me back? Not exactly like that. But you yeah. Have yeah. So, do you know what? Then... Sorry, you go. And then I've actually gone to the extreme yesterday because we had a guy, um, we're doing all these, we're running this business summit actually for smart chicks and we're pitching to people that we actually sometimes don't know these days. So we're getting out of our own comfort zones and up leveling to um, some really hardcore, awesome business owners that we would really love to see show some value to the community. Right. And one of the people um, wrote back and said, can you ring me on Tuesday after 10? And I was thinking, crap, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't ring you on Wednesday either. And I also can't ring you on Thursday. Um, <laughs> so, damn it. <laughs> it's probably going to be like 2 o'clock on Friday. Ah. But, um, so there's, there was that. And then there was another guy who said, um, I was sort of hoping that I might have a look at that speaker's agreement a couple of weeks ago. Where are you at with it? I'm going overseas, yada, yada. So the voice, uh, the um, auto responder. I'm just going to actually, um, can I share the screen? Is sure. that all right? Yep. Um, you have to talk through it for people just listening on audio. I will. It says. I will. So basically I've written in the auto responder. Thank you for reaching out to smart chicks. We will get back to you shortly. Usually within 24 to 48 hours. I started off with 24 and then I was like, I'm just going to burn that out <laughs> to 48 hours. <laughs> if it takes a teensy bit longer for you to find uh, if it takes a teensy bit longer, you may find us in the following places. One, the bathroom, hiding from our children. <laughs> Two, on the floor for days, cleaning up food scraps. Three, <laughs> at the school, dropping off the lunch we forgot to pack. I yep. should change that to again. Four, speaking to our husbands for the first time in three days. <laughs> Five, authentically connecting with the wonderful entrepreneurs to ensure your community is amazing as it possibly can be. Stay unapologetic unapologetically authentic Kurtz, Kirsty and Courts. I just totally didn't know how to read or say my own name then. That was kind of weird. <laughs> Stay unapologetically authentic. Now, um, Claire, I actually wrote a bit of a question in um, one of the Facebook groups that we hang out in um, last week or this week asking, what do you guys say when you sign off? on your emails, like in business. And there was a lot of kind regards and warm regards and yawn, yawn type stuff. But then, then came Claire. And I was really hoping that you would come to the party because I knew that you would have something really creative and awesome that you <laughs> said. So what do you say? When I you say sign off? imperfectly Claire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you're imperfectly Claire. And I was like, I don't just want to be authentically court, courts and Kirsty, or, I, you know, so I thought unapologetically authentically. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yes. Unapologetic <laughs> is one of my absolutely favourite words in the last six months or so in, in terms of, like, in um, my Facebook group, as you know, we've got a um, hashtag own it and hashtag brag and, like, have these yes. excuses to get up and say, look at me, I'm amazing, check out this thing, which can be the brag or the own it. And we've also got this, ugh, I fucked up, but I'm going to own it and I'm not going to apologise for it. And, like that is Thursday own it day is the most awesome day in my group because everyone jumps in there and they've either got some cool thing that they've absolutely nailed or something that they're just going, oh my God, you're never going to believe how much of a complete catastrophe I've just created. And they're totally oh. And I like it's so cool for people to have the strength and the confidence and the um, okayness to actually yes. say that unapologetically. I've stuffed up. Or you know what? I'm really tired today. I'm sorry, but I'm, well, I'm not sorry. I'm just not going to get that thing done today. Cause I'm going to go and sit on the couch and watch Netflix and fill my cups up a little bit. Like look after me exactly. just for a few minutes. And I'm not going to apologize for that. It's going to happen. And the final episode of Suits just aired on Netflix, so that's As important. If you're not gonna. Well, actually, no, Apple TV. Um, I'll tell you what else is a massive fuck-up. So a hashtag, 
hashtag own it. I'm just going to be a recovering perfectionist here. Actually, I've never really been a perfectionist, but we'll just whatever. <laughs> <laughs> kind of it. Yeah, hashtag own it. Um, so one of the guys who actually said, can you just get back to us on Tuesday after 10? Um, we r- Smart Chicks responded and it said something like, it's like the biggest autocorrect fail ever. <laughs> can you please give us your number never? Thanks, Smart Chicks. <laughs> <laughs> And I read it and I was like, damn it. Oh, that sounds really rude. And he didn't respond back. I better get back to that situation. Whoopsie. <laughs> it's like, you know what, dude? I know you've got three kids. I know you're kind of cool. I know you're probably busy. It's going to be cool. You know, yeah. whatever. These things happen. Um, I'm just trying to think if I had anything else that I wanted to tell you guys. Um, the, if you... If you're running a business and you're hanging out in Facebook groups, right, I think, you know, we were talking about the hashtags then. We have created um, our Facebook group to have very specific hashtags that encourage people to get out of the bushes of their business, right? So, you know, one of them is uh, my story. So a lot of people can authentically Mm. just, it's about being able to show up and actually practice telling people in a safe space about yourself Mm. because when you show up and actually talk about yourself in a way that is real and raw and amazing and you've had shitty times and you've had joyful times and you know the whole own it thing as well like sometimes you fuck up and you need to talk about it and you know whatever Mm -hmm. um space has been amazing um, for people to be able to just practice telling their story because one day they're going to be on a podcast one day they're going to be on the stage one day they're going to be interviewed on tv and they need to be able to draw upon that Mm. and the neuronal pathways this is where my ot for women in business kind of um thing comes into play people need to actually create neuronal pathways in their brain so that they can just draw upon this information and that doesn't just happen like even today i've had to sort of write down some points about the things that i wanted to talk about because i'm not used to getting up and actually talking about my own beliefs and things that I, um, I uh, are important to me for 60 minutes or 45 minutes in a row. So you need to practice and say yes to things and say yes to opportunities so that you can build those neuronal pathways in your brain. And then it just comes really naturally when people do put you on the spot, when you are famous and you are in the public eye and you need yeah. to be able to just and come I'll up tell with you that. What, I've been interviewed quite a bit in the last um, two months or so, and there is nothing better than someone who can ask you the right questions for you to get really, really clear on your message and your, like whatever you're kind of passionate about. If you've got someone who can ask you some questions to really kind of extrapolate all of that stuff from you and get you thinking in a really smart way, not in a, you know, crazy way. Um, it's amazing. Like the, the first one that I really did that went for almost an hour was with Shilpa Agarwal and she recorded it and I said, can I have that? Like I, that was the best way that I've ever been able to articulate why I do what I do and what I do and what my message is. And I hadn't, I hadn't ever gotten to that point. And now that it's happened quite a few times, I'm like, well, I don't need to prepare so much because it, I, it just comes so naturally. And when someone asks me about yes. it, I can just, I know exactly what I, what the thing is or, you know, kind of where to go with that. And it's such an important part of the um, processing and the articulation of all of that sort of thing is to actually talk about it. Whether you record it, whether it's for a podcast or a speaking gig or whatever, it doesn't really matter. As long as you've got someone to kind of ask you the right questions and dig a bit deeper. Like when you say something and, and they can say, hang on a minute, can we just go back to that thing? And then you go, oh, fuck, what's she going to ask me? And you just, <laughs> well, it's, it's a really powerful thing. And speaking of which, and I'll just do a quick um, um, segue here. So just for everyone listening home, we mentioned before that we've started doing some collaboration. So obviously Courts and Kirsty started doing um, the Smart Chicks events, which is a monthly event done in Adelaide. And then I was the first one to go outside of Adelaide and I've taken on a branch in Brisbane. So that's been going yes. for about seven or eight months now. I think we started in about September, 2016. And Holy crap. Um, so that's been really cool. So, yeah. And our, um, I've started doing some workshops with a beautiful woman called Simone de Haas, who has a business called the Speakers Director. And she's also um, quite a famous actress and a theatre performer and a singer and all of that sort of thing. Um, so I've gone to a couple of her workshops to improve my public speaking because it's definitely something I want to start doing a lot more of. But she's actually going to be our June speaker and she's talking about Yay! the power of story. 
So that's her thing. She, oh. she talks about how to tell your story. And when I've seen her do the feedback at these speaking events, when she's actually talking you through how to tell your story. And, and I did an interview spot with her and just having someone to kind of follow you, you know, down and ask you a few more questions and that sort of thing is amazing. And I really love that whole idea of being okay with your story. Like in, uh, we've talked about this before, but when, when you're in corporate, you kind of, you leave your personality at the door and when you go in, you've got to be wearing the clothes that they want you to and saying the words that they want you and you've got these, you know, scripts yes. really. So you don't really have your own thing. So we kind of get out of the habit of bringing our own story. You know, a lot of the time your boss didn't really give a shit if you had kids. Yeah, you're really regurgitating some crap that someone exactly. else has told you to say all the time. So but when you get into telling your own story, it gives you a great articulation, a great jumping off point, but it also holds that space for everyone else to do the same. Something yes. I really, really, really love. Um, my husband went to a, an event and um recently and he he had a bit of an emotional moment he came home and he was like oh I did this and I said that is the most awesome thing you could do because a you've done it for yourself which is a release and a processing thing but you've also held space and you've shown those other 30 people those other 30 men that it's okay to have emotions and to be human and to show those emotions and not to have to bottle them up until you go crazy and you know whatever so that's it's a really powerful thing to be able to do and it's a hard thing to do because you're scared of ridicule and embarrassment and um, yes. failure and all that sort of thing. But when you can actually do it and get over it and see that, you know, you didn't get completely shot down for being human, you've not only done it for yourself, but you've held that space and made it okay for everyone else to do it, which is just so freaking It's so true. It is so true. And the number of times people have given me the feedback because you said this or because you showed up here or because you made it okay that you were doing this and your child was on you or, you know, whatever the circumstances are, I felt like, oh my God, I did some self-reflection and I noticed that it was actually okay for me to do that too. And then yeah. all of a sudden I've been getting clients or all of a sudden, <laughs> and this is right. where the out of the business course has been so yeah. fantastic for yeah. people because we've had, you know, the whole purpose of that, again, which is one of the collaborations that we've got with Claire. She's our content planning expert in the Gather the Bushes course. And to be able to show up authentically um, and say your message and talk to your tribe and even understand what your message is or even understand um, where you want to show up, first and foremost, you need to understand what belief systems are holding you back. So we've got the amazing Suzanne Leonard who talks about that. And then we need to understand, because if you've got underlying belief systems that are um, if I show up with no makeup on, I'm not professional. If I um, if I talk about money, then I'm a rich, heinous bitch. Yeah. If I talk about myself, then I'm up myself and I'm an attention seeker on social media. All of those self um, those self sabotaging belief systems will hold you back from getting out of the bushes mm. of your business. So yeah. you'd say we need to identify that, and then. Um, Understanding the importance of talking to strangers. I was talking about this yesterday. I've been talking about this a lot lately. Just actually understanding how to speak to people. So this is the whole my story thing. This is the whole reason why at our Smart Chicks events, we have the first half an hour for people to be able to just say their pitch and practice for one minute telling the group in a safe space what they actually do. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, some of these women that turn up to our events for the first time are shaking, they're going red, they're almost crying. Some of them avoid doing it very rarely because we don't really tend to live, encourage that <laughs> we might just stand there and hold them <laughs> while they're doing it but um you know because again it comes back to the building these neuronal pathways to be able to confidently go out and tell people what you do mm. understand that we need to be interested not interesting understand that we need to ask people about their family and their occupation and their the things that they like to do and their dreams because that will absolutely generate conversation and it will help you to feel more comfortable to actually get out and be authentic and talk to people and actually understand what is important to them therefore how can you serve them understanding authentic content planning so how can you actually um show up and tell your tribe what they want to hear mm. hey here's an idea maybe remember that bit about how when we were talking about you know number one not hiding in the bush number two um being okay with talking to your tribe like funnily enough, you have yeah. to actually show up to sell yeah. your stuff to them. <laughs> actually ask them what they want. That's okay. Like there's yeah. all these, um, do not, there's all these rules that people have in their head about how yeah. that it's supposed to be. I'm supposed to be an expert and I can't, 
I can't ask them what they want because yeah. then I'm letting the cat out I of the bag. I don't know what they want. I don't know what I'm doing. And it's like, hey, when we started Smart Chicks, we didn't know what we were doing yeah. at all. Yeah. We were like, we really like connecting people. We really <laughs> like showing up authentically. And we really like running networking events. How the fuck do you make that into a business? Yeah. I don't know. Let's just talk about it and yeah. show up and talk yeah. about how we're, we're just ourselves and yada, yada, and see what happens. And then finally, understanding what your brand strategy is and, you know, daggly authentic personal brand strategy. How do you show up and make sure that you're constantly engaging with your audience in the way that you want to show up? Yeah. So we're very much about one take, no fake. That's one of our favorite kind of hashtags in Smart Chicks land showing up and actually not being a perfectionist, Claire, mm -hmm. you yeah. know all about this as yeah. well. Just literally putting the friggin' phone in front of your face and doing it. Yeah. Like yeah. whatever comes to mind. And if it's a bit crap in your head or if it's a bit um, imperfect in your head, often no one gives a shit. Everyone's so like, true. oh, my God. I'm so grateful for the fact that you had the lady balls to show up to begin exactly, with. Awesome. Exactly. Don't you? I think there's this, whole, um, there's this whole thing around, um, especially for mums, and I, I don't mean to totally single out women because I think it's a thing for men as well, but there's a big thing, especially for mums, where we have to have well-behaved kids, the nice house, we have to look good, <laughs> we have to feel good, we have to be successful in whatever we do, whether it's business or career, we have to have great friends and we have to look after our friends and we have to, you know, there's so many things that we have to kind of, we have to kind of keep doing, but we're not allowed to let it look like we're trying, which is yes. bullshit. Like I just really want to say, I, yes, I've got a lot going on and I've, you know, in my mind and by my stretch of the imagination, I'm successful. I love my life. I have great friends. I have a cool family. I have a beautiful house. Like I love my life. But I've worked really freaking hard for it. And I work really freaking hard for it most days. Some days not so much, but most of the time it's hard work. And I'm okay with that. Mm. Like it's, it's easy in some ways because I love it. But it's also, it's not like it just happens. I'm not just swanning around and things are just naturally perfect and easy and gorgeous. It's really it, like I have to try. Do you know yes. what I mean? We're not allowed to look like we're trying. We have to look like we've got all our shit sorted, but not like, like it just, you know, oh yeah, I just did that. And oh yeah, I just... I just whipped up this Pinterest style birthday party for my kid. And yeah, I totally, you know, <laughs> it's just, it's not a thing. So I want to say, yeah, I got my shit sorted most of the time. I'm trying really hard and I'm really, I'm, I'm ambitious and I'm going after these things. It's not just coming to me. It's not just like happening. It's, I'm trying. But it's, when you're on your mission, right? So when you are actually on your personal mission, you're aligned with what you're supposed to be doing and you're showing up as yourself instead of the bullshit version of yourself. So you're showing up as yourself, all of a sudden working hard, working the weird hours, deciding to, you know, like yesterday I felt like I did like a triple shift because I got up, took the kids to school and um, then I, my husband let like to talk Matthew because I was just so like, oh, I've got to get something done. <laughs> so did some work for Smart Cheeks, then quickly went and got Matthew, quickly had like mum, son time, uh, t turn my phone off, pretend I'm not interested in that when I'm with him, go and do the school pickup, yeah. walk into the schoolyard, it's all crazy, I'm trying to have a quick phone call because we've got like an awesome joint venture that Kirsty needed to check in with me about so and there's like um, and then go home be all present with your children and like you know I made them a we, we had a picnic I went to the central markets got some cheese we had like a okay. um like a French picnic thing because I was like fuck I've got to feed these kids at like 3 30 or 4 o'clock because I need to I be really somewhere at six o'clock drink, <laughs> drink wine so we're gonna call it a picnic okay <laughs> We're going to have a picnic okay. and I'm just going to chuck some grapes on there so it looks like we're eating healthy food as well. <laughs> so we're doing that and then um, and then I was like, okay, now I've got to go because um, I – and then you go and you do more work in the night but the whole thing doesn't feel stressful because right. it, feel, it feels busy, right, yeah. because you've got a lot kind of going on, especially like when you pre-launch into, you know, a big course or a summer or, you know, conference or whatever you – preparing for mm. which at the moment i want to have a nap all the time because i'm like holy crap i'm having to deal with technology quite a lot and it makes me want to just have a nap all the time <laughs> but, 
<laughs> like, I'm not joking. Yesterday we had two meetings and I was just like, oh God, I gotta just, I got, I gotta go. Like, this is just. <laughs> I, think, I think my uh, cutlery needs <laughs> polishing. <right? laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the paint needs to be painted and yeah. watched to dry. <laughs> so, um, but my my point is when you're when you're absolutely showing up because in the way that you want to mm-hmm. unapologetically and you're not trying to pretend to have this weird facade of a person that you're actually not that real person, all of a sudden the hours might be there, but you're not burnt out and you're not tired and you're not exhausted and you're not feeling anxious about what people are going to think and say and do and react because you are unashamedly, 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 unashamedly yourself. I keep saying all these like unapologetically, I need to like create words that I know how to actually say (laughs) without being tongue tied. Anyway, I know what I mean in my head. So whatever. We get you. (laughs) Yeah. So yeah. Awesome. So I think that's yeah. Absolutely. And so, um, before we go, you give us. Yes. Sorry, you go. Oh, uh, I was just going to say as well. I was going to say on a final note as well. The the biggest thing I think is to actually, as women particularly, we need to show up with our feelings and our intuition and our mm. um, silent space instead of taking on this whole masculine like I need to be a freaking hustler and be, be in the four AM club. I tell this story a lot because I think it resonates with a lot of women, particularly dudes. We're in the fucking 4am club when our children are vomiting. We're in the 4am club and the 2am club and the 11pm club. Every single time our children come in and wake us up. Every time our children have a nightmare or need a freaking bottle or need a nappy change or whatever. So you don't feel like you need to take on that. I'm going to be a 24 hour hustler. I'm going to have a four hour work week. Like Tim Ferriss, I dare say is probably single and childless. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know that conclusively, but I'm just going to make an educated guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. So anyway, be yourself, be authentic. All right. Don't so apologize. before we go, what's your quick, um, say top two or three tips for people who are trying to get more authentically showing up online? Where do they get started? If they've never done selfies, videos, all that sort of thing. What are your top three or two or three sort of things to just get started with that and start being okay with showing up authentically online? Um, I'm big on massive imperfect action, so just fucking do it, right? You don't need to think as soon as you sit there and go, oh, my God, what do I do? What am I going to do? You just won't do it. Just get the freaking camera, do it, and whatever. Um, And don't worry. and, And the secondary point to that, choose a safe space. So the reason why Claire created her group, the recovering perfectionist, the reason why I created my group, Smart, Smart Chicks Coterie with Kirsty, is so that people were given a safe space to be able to show yeah. up and actually yeah. practice in showing a safe space yeah. before they go out to the big wide world. So use yeah. those safe spaces or create your own freaking safe space. Beautiful. The other thing I would say is speak your truth because and this is something that I am still working on because I've got all these weird, I suspect past life kind of things where I probably spoke my truth and got freaking hung or something. I get my red rash and feel like tight in my throat, <laughs> you know, that sort of stuff. So that's stuff that I'm still working through, but speak your truth and don't be apologetic about that. Mm. Um, and don't necessarily be like a rude asshole to people as we were talking about before, but whatever the biggest thing that I, I try and do is use no filter, but come from a heart space, yeah. right? So you don't yeah. want to be all like a dick to people. Yeah. You want to be genuine with your intentions, genuinely wanting to give, genuinely wanting to understand, but don't filter what's on your brain. Wow. Like when people speak, often they will go, my thoughts are this, but I'm going to say this. Mm-hmm. My idea was this, but I'm going to veto it and kind of reword it to this because that's what I think the people want to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Practice saying exactly like when you're journal writing and you're writing exactly what's coming out of your brain, no matter how kind of weird and funky it sounds, practice speaking like that mm-hmm. because you'll find that your message is true and people will start following you and you will build a really, really fucking cool tribe. Yeah. That would be my who you want in there. If people don't want to hear what you actually have to say, they're not the people that you want to be talking to. So it doesn't really matter. Yes. Yeah. And it, right. what that does is build a culture because mm. the culture that you show up, the, the way that you show up authentically 
is building a culture for your tribe. And if they think it's okay to be a judgmental asshole because you are, then that's what's going to happen. If they think that it's okay to show up and cry and be authentic and be amazing and tell everyone how you're shitting, like you literally shut the bed from freaking fear because you were <laughs> talking to someone in America that you put on some weird pedestal and then you realised that they were actually all right. You know, all that sort of stuff. Like actually <laughs> rocking up and yeah. talking about your own personal fears Everyone is a person. We're all the same. We don't need to be put on a pedestal. It's just love like it. show up, yes. be yourself. Be yourself. Oh, I love you. You're such a breath of fresh air. I absolutely <laughs> adore talking to you. I love working with you. I love seeing everything you do. I just basically lap up everything that you ever put out into the world. Um, oh, thank, thank you so much. Likewise. How, how can people find you more? Obviously, we'll put all of your links in the um, show notes and that sort of thing. But um, is there anything, any easy, super easy way or something you want to tell us about that's happening um, yep. in the next little while? So you can find us um, at smartchicks.com.au. That website isn't 100% finished yet, but Me. whatever, go and check it out. Um, <laughs> it looks pretty good. <laughs> it's got an opt-in. <laughs> Feel free to stop. Yeah. And then um, you can also find us at Smart Chicks Coterie, which is our free online Facebook group. Um, that is just a happy, friendly, awesome yeah, place as well. Place. So yeah. There. Awesome. Thank you, lovely. So great to have you. And I'm sure we'll do this again sometime. We've got lots to talk about, and this is just a tiny little snippet of it. So awesome. Like awesome the chatting. The iceberg, isn't it? it really is. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you. I'll talk to you soon. And that is absolutely it, my lovely. So I hope you've really enjoyed the episode. It was great fun recording that one, as it is with all of them. If you'd like to connect, I'd love to stay in touch with you. I have a beautiful Facebook group um, community at bit.ly forward slash The Recovering Perfectionist Crew with all um, capital T, R, P and C. I'm also, I also have a massive goal this year to get 50,000 downloads on my podcast and I've got a YouTube show as well. So I'd love for you to help me out if you can by either subscribing to the podcast on iTunes. So if you want to go over and do that now, that would be awesome. If you have a couple of favorite episodes or if there's one favorite episode that you've really enjoyed, I would love you to share that with anyone who you think would get as much out of it as you have as well. And while you're in iTunes, if you can jump in and give it a review, that would be amazing. iTunes definitely helps out podcasts that have got some, some good ratings and reviews and some really interactive listeners. So I would really appreciate your help with getting to my goal of 50,000 in 2017. The show is also available over on YouTube. The links are always in the show notes, so you can um, head over there. So it's The Recovering Perfectionist on YouTube. There's a channel for that as well. So jump in and leave your comments. You can watch all of the episodes in video. So if you want to see what we look like and our crazy hand gestures and uh, facial expressions and all of that sort of thing, absolutely jump in. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel show as well and then you'll be kept up to date when there's some uh, new episodes that come in there. So yeah, love your support. And if you want to shoot me an email, it's hello at clairebarton.com.au always happy to receive your emails and yeah open up a conversation all right big love i'll chat with you soon bye